What's up guys and gals, welcome to weekend review number four, I think maybe is the one that we're on right now. It is the weekend review for 11-16-2014 or 16-11-2014 or you know, I don't really know anymore. There's a million different ways the days are displayed everywhere and so I figured I'd just like hit them all. So what's been going on this week? Well, I'm in the process of moving. If you look back behind me, you will see that the bookcase is quite empty. I've been tearing down posters. Haven't quite gotten like all the video games and things packed up yet, but my living room's about done. And in fact, I'm bundled up right now because I was running around out in the night air and it's actually pretty chilly. Like winter is officially here. I think that we just skipped fall altogether here in California. I'm not even sure what happened. Like we went straight from summer to winter like right after there was no fall as of right now it's getting dark at like four in the afternoon and it's like i don't know it doesn't get light out until like nine o'clock i wouldn't know because i don't wake up then but you know that's what people tell me anyways that's what's been relayed to me and so i feel like the days are very very short as it stands right now and so i was running around in the frosty midnight air okay the 10 30 air trying to get boxes so that i can move further and i went all over town like i've been all over the place but it seems like everybody's already bailered down all their boxes at like eight o'clock at night so i gotta go back out in the morning which is all kinds of trouble because i don't like mornings but i'll get out eventually i went to costco and sam's club eventually and i got like 30 boxes but unfortunately they weren't broken down so I fit as many as I could in my car, and I drove back home, but I've already packed up using all of them. I'm in the process of moving, and so I'm moving back to the East Bay from the North Bay. It should be pretty fun. I'm excited to get back home. Honestly, I feel like I've lived away from home now for like six or seven years. Pretty excited about moving back. But on to the process of channel business, because we have stuff to talk about. I think, first and foremost, we've got... Let me see if I can get a little bit more comfy. There we go. Well, maybe... I don't know. I was centered up before I started, and now I don't even know if I am anymore. You stop coming towards me. I don't like that. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I didn't give you permission. This is non-consensual. Anyways, so number one, this war of mine is the thing of the week for me anyways. I'm really, really happy that it finally released. It's a game that I've been jonesing about and really, really wanting to play, and I've been super stoked that I was able to do not just one series, but two series on it. And I think the second series is going a lot better. The things that I do like about this war of mine thus far is the fact that the game really is actually... It's not super challenging, but you can... You make decisions and you have to live with those decisions and I think that in and of itself turns out to be like one of those weird gameplay mechanics where sometimes like you make a decision and you can't go back on it and you're just like oh I'm so upset with just what just happened I I can't stand this right if you're wondering by the way why I'm all bundled up because I just came back from getting boxes and I wore a hat for this video because seriously my hair looks like a train wreck right now like I jumped straight out of the shower and threw a hat on without thinking about it and went out to find boxes and seriously I look like Napo right now or so I look like I don't even know I don't even know like from Dragon Ball Z I look like Raccoon or something right now I've got like some kind of weird like I have a mohawk but it's got like this weird thing going on right now believe me it's traumatic if you saw it your eyes would bleed and so I'm just hiding it from the general public right now this war of mine I like the game a lot I really sincerely do and I do like the fact that they've added the ability to save the game because frankly that was the one thing that kept me from playing it a whole lot when it was in its pre-release version was the fact that I couldn't save the game it's dark the game is ugly the game is really grim and in fact in some of the future episodes as you're gonna see this week some really bad stuff does happen to some really nice people and it's just like wow well, what can you even do about it though you're living in a world where everything is just falling apart and it's like you can step in and try and save somebody but you're gonna get yourself killed in the process and so it's really weird how you have to kind of like draw back inwards and turn into kind of this weird selfish hunter gatherer type person that just doesn't care about other people like you feel empathetic but it's just like there's nothing you can do about it like the guy's getting robbed by like six dudes with machine guns like I'm sitting here with a pocket knife like what am I gonna do to help save this guy I'm just going to go upstairs and loot the building while they're distracted on him. And while that sounds like a really cynical way to approach the world, it's just like the game forces you into that situation. You just don't have time to feel sorry for some of the characters. You just, you got to go and you got to get the job done. I think that the other things, I'm, I'm about ready for Alien Isolation to end, I think. Alien Isolation is a game that I think I've recorded out about like 40 episodes now. And every time, like, I feel like I'm so close. I really do. The game is just, I think the game gives the impression too many times that like you're done and then they're like, oh wait, you gotta go all the way back across the station to pull this lever that then won't work. And then you gotta go all the way over to there to pull another lever so that that lever will work. And I think I'm just tired of the goalposts being moved. I'm about ready for the game to be over. I'm definitely starting to sympathize with some of the reviews that said the game was too damn long. Because seriously, I think the game... There's been like four points so far that I think they could have legitimately ended the game at and it would have been satisfying. Like, there's the point at which you launch the alien out into space... Would have been totally satisfying if they had stopped the game right there. Like, eh, they could have followed it up with a sequel about what happened when the alien landed on the planet when you launched it out or something, but 
it was a logical conclusion. I felt like it was all over. Second point is once we blew up the reactor, I was like, okay, we blew up the reactor. So now what do we do? Did I blow up the reactor yet? Oops, spoiler alert. Anyways, I think the boy, I might, I might have done it. Hmm. Anyways, we blow up a thing. You'll see what I mean. And so in blowing a thing up, that's another spot where it could have been a satisfying end for the game. And then there's another point after that where it could have totally been a satisfying end. Like they just keep having these situations where as a story, a person that really, really enjoys reading books and stuff, I'm like, that would have been a good point to stop. That would have been a good point to stop. But every time they get there, they're just like, well, we could make you run around, dodge the alien, and pull a few more levers, huh? Who's down for some lever pulling? And you're like, okay, I guess I'll go pull some more levers. So Alien Isolation, I think, is I'm about ready for it to be over. I think it is... It hasn't overstayed its welcome, but I've, I've noticed that in the last couple episodes, I'm increasingly just tired of the alien. And the second that it comes down, I just, like, throw a pipe bomb at it, and I'm like, all right, whatever. I've, I've noticed that I've become increasingly aggressive with the alien. I just don't care anymore. I'm, like, sprinting down hallways, throwing pipe bombs at people, and just being like, is it over? And so I'm hoping that we'll get there eventually. Binding of Isaac, I have been playing a lot of Binding of Isaac. And so with Weekly Indie Newcomer, you will notice that I had a game that I was going to put up on Indie Weekly Newcomer or Weekly Indie Newcomer, but I didn't feel like I was experienced enough with the game yet to really do a true qualitative kind of preview. And so I decided to step away from it and just do Binding of Isaac, which admittedly, as you all told me, I was terrible at. I'm getting better at it. I had a five kill streak last night where I killed Mom's Heart five times in a row. I was pretty stoked, and then I screwed it up by... I could have killed Mom's Heart on the sixth run, and instead... Instead of cashing in, I decided to go to Sheol and go for that. And I've killed the devil a couple times now, but I'm still really inconsistent with the devil. Like, sometimes I do fine, sometimes I do terrible. It kind of depends, like, what time of the day it is, how awake I am, how many beers I've had. Basically, how flustered I am, how much health I have. It's just good runs and bad runs, I suppose. Good runs and bad runs. And so... I keep having the runs every night with Binding of Isaac, though. Every single night. I've been playing the hell out of that game. I think in the last two to three days, I've gone from like four hours played up to like 23 hours played. I have just been zoning out and playing Binding of Isaac for like weeks at a time. It's very, very strange how quickly time is going by when I play that game. And I'm so bad at it. That's the thing. In 20 hours, I have gotten no better. That's the really sad part is in 20 hours, my nose has gotten really itchy. Anyways, in 20 hours, I've gotten no better at that game. I mean, my mom kills are becoming more frequent. I say I win about 70% of the time now, but I still have no idea what most of the items do. Like, I forget, and I have to Google, and I have to, like, pause the game and jump out and out tab and look real fast. Then I'm like, oh, yeah, that's what that does. It's mostly the trinkets at this point, actually. I'm doing a pretty good job with the passives, and I'm starting to memorize some of the active items. But the trinkets, I always forget what the trinkets do for some reason. Like, there are certain ones that have dropped so many times now that, like... I've memorized them. The safety cap, for example. I love the safety cap. The safety cap is my jam. I'm all over the safety cap. I do like... Eh, what other ones have I really, really liked? There's the one with the little worm called, like, Whoop or something like that. Schwoop or... Not Schwoop to Whoop. That's a that's an active item. But there's one that's like... It looks like a little sperm. But it's not the bendy sperm and it's not the wiggle swarm. So it's not the wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And it's not the one that makes it go, like, in 90 degree intervals from where it was initially. Instead, it's the one that just makes you shoot really far. I think it maxes out your range or something like that. Either way, I really, really like that one. But there's a number of trinkets I've been a fan of so far. I think that I've stopped playing. I've gotten reasonably decent at killing Krampus. And so I've stopped using Krampus's head right now because Krampus's head is just like super easy mode. Like it is seriously the greatest thing ever. Like you can clear entire rooms with it with like one blast. And so I've stopped doing that, but I haven't stepped it up to hard mode yet, and I'm still not super consistent, but Binding of Isaac has just been eating up all kinds of time. I started playing Clockwork Empires this week. I don't have any footage, so unfortunately, you know how I like to put the footage up in the corner? Can't do that right now because I don't have any footage of it. I haven't really recorded anything with it just yet. I've been playing Hardland as well. Hardland is a game that I am actually really, really looking forward to. As of right now, my computer can't run it, though. Like, I'm playing it on high detail because the game is so gorgeous that it's really a shame to, like, turn down the graphics on it. But for whatever reason, my computer is just not agreeing with Hardland right now, but it's a beautiful game. As soon as they put something to actually do in it, aside from run around and murder people, it'll be a lot of fun, I think. It's a really, really good-looking game. It kind of reminds me of James and the Giant Peach, some of those really, really old Tim Burton films that he used to work on. Fun fact, my uncle, you know Tim Burton's James and the Giant Peach? My uncle made the peach in that movie. My uncle worked with Tim Burton for a long-ass time as like a... I don't even know what he did. 
like for all of Tim Burton's mo stop motion stuff, he works with Tim Burton, not anymore, but he used to. Now he works at an opera house somewhere building <laughs> sets or something like that. But anyways, my uncle built the peach, so there's that. That's pretty cool, so there's a little reference right there. He always he talks about Tim Burton. You can ask him questions about Tim Burton. He says Tim Burton's a really, really odd guy. He says that like Tim Burton doesn't like to answer questions the way that you ask them. Like You'll ask him a question like, should we do this with the set piece that we're building? Or like with the art, like, look, I made this piece of art for the movie. Do you want me to put it here or do you want me to put it here? And he said Tim Burton just gets lost in thought all the time. He's just like, well, and then he'll just, just an odd individual. But I guess we could have extrapolated that from the large body of works that he's put out over the last 10 years or 15, 20, actually 20 years at this point. God, maybe even 30 years. Tim Burton's been around for a while at this point. What else has been going on on the channel? Well, Jagged Alliance Flashback. I am interested in playing Jagged Alliance Flashback, but I haven't recorded anything yet. I haven't, I've got two episodes left that I haven't uploaded, and I will be uploading those. I think I am going to finish the game, because I actually think that I'm one of the only people on YouTube who's actually doing a playthrough. And I feel, I think Full Control will do right by the game. I, I stick by my proclamation, because Full Control has never abandoned a game yet. And so I'm going to stick by it for now, and if it comes back wrong, well, I guess it comes back wrong. I've been playing Massive Chalice a little bit. Massive Chalice. I've got a lot of things going on right now, actually. I'm playing a lot of games very lightly at the moment because I'm moving and there's not a whole lot of stuff going on. I'm sorry, I'm moving and there is a whole lot of stuff going on. Sorry, I, I'm mixing up words. I'm exhausted at this point. It's been one of those days. But Massive Chalice I've been playing. I'm not totally sold on it yet. I am the kind of person that gets really, really attached to my heroes when I play strategy games and like strategy RPGs, and so I like my heroes to be there the entire game. And Massive Chalice, if you don't know what it is, essentially it's like a sprawling turn-based strategy game where you manage a kingdom and you have heroes and they live and they die and they have children. So kind of it kind of uses ideas from like the Saga Frontier series and stuff like that where it's through like dozens of generations, but at the same time, every family has their own bloodlines and traits and things that they do and then they can be promoted to be nobility and then they get titles and things like that. And I like the game, but I don't like the disposability of the characters. I don't like how I'm attached to families instead of actual characters. I'm the kind of person that like loses my mind when one of my colonels or whatever dies in XCOM because I get attached to the characters. I can't stand the fact that to my mind these characters sort of become quasi real I guess. Like I don't know. The characters after I play with them for a while I sort of imbue them with personalities and things like that. Like I don't know if you've ever watched Beagle Rush or if you've ever watched some of the more prominent XCOM players but there's emergent gameplay there where your characters over time you start to play, I think it starts out where like lucky things will happen or the character you'll accidentally do something dumb but the character will make like a 10% shot like twice in a row to like bail himself out of it and from then you start to play the character more recklessly. It's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like you do something dumb one time and then after that like it's like the character's emergent personality comes out and you start to see him as that reckless character and you start using him as your scout and stuff like that. And so I'm the kind of person that gets very very attached to my XCOM characters and when they die I get upset and it tends to make me just like reroll entirely. That's that's why I, I have a trouble. I have a lot of problems with XCOM is because like I just I can't stand losing soldiers. I get attached to them and I just feel guilty and I'm just like I just got a guy killed and it makes me feel really really bad deep inside my tummy bits. By and large, though, I think what we've got going on at the Nerd Castle right now, we've got Crown Takers, so I think that's the one that I've missed so far. We have Crown Takers and we have Space Hulk, so I'll do Crown Takers first. Crown Takers I like. Crown Takers, I think I, I rebooted the series somewhere in the middle, and I wanted to give an explanation for that because I feel like I left that one kind of in the dark. When I say I was being grumpy during the episode, like you... I was being really, really grumpy during the episode, just like, meh, a pox on this game, a pox on this game's mama, a pox on this game's mama's mama. Like, I was, I was really just, like, in a bad mood playing the game, and I realized that I wasn't, like, mad because of the game. I was mad because the game was beating me, and I don't like that. I don't like it when a game takes me and grabs me by my hair and is just like, <laughs> and, like, slaps me around for a couple minutes. And that's what Crown Takers does. It is just a nasty little game. It really... The difference between a good run and a bad run in Crown Takers is just absolutely ridiculous. However, in the next coming episodes, we do start to like accomplish things. We do get things done. And so I think that's good. We start to actually clear the map. And I think we're actually approaching one of the final zones. 
as it stands right now. I think in the final episode I cut last time, we make some pretty good progression. We make some pretty good steps. And in fact, there's a really humorous combat that I was stuck on for a while that we end up solving in like kind of a funny way. But anyways, I like Crown Takers. It has its flaws, and I don't think that Crown Takers is for everyone. But at the same time, I think that Crown Takers is remarkably challenging. I wish that they would change some things around with Crown Takers. A, I want them to remove the spawning. I think that the way that you spawn in combat makes things either ridiculously more difficult or ridiculously more simple and nothing in between. It's very rare that you get an even combat in that game where like you spawn over here, the enemy spawns right here, and then you converge on each other and you fight. Almost every single time it's like, your party is all over the screen, the enemies are all interspersed, and then of course you've got like five guys who are adjacent to your archer. And so stuff like that, I'd like to see that sorted out a little bit so the spawning is a little bit more non-adjacent, I guess would be the way. I don't care if we have our units, like my units are all over here, and then they're all inside my units as well, and we're talking about a lot of units right now, which is getting kind of weird and phallic. But anyways, lots of units all interspersed with each other. I don't care about that. It's just that the game punishes adjacency so much and things like that for archers that when you start an archer directly side by side with a melee, it's just like, okay, so I guess I know what we're doing on our first turn. We're doing Operation Bail Out Our Archer or he's going to die next turn. And so that's one of the things that I'd like to see changed. I think the loot frequency is a little bit sporadic as it stands right now. I have runs where I get nothing like absolutely nothing the entire time and then I have runs where it just rains potions and it rains gear and it rains money the entire time and you're able to basically progress through the game a lot easier than you were in any of your previous runs and so sometimes I feel like I'm just waiting for that perfect run where we don't take damage we get a lot of easy combats we get this that or the other to where you can take an honest stab at whatever boss that you're stuck on before you know you get pistol with the death because obviously the first time you fight a boss I think you're pretty much toast because you just don't know what they do you don't know how to lock them down you don't really know how to engage them sometimes even the second time you don't know for example with Barka she can one shot you in the first turn if you're not ready for it because she comes with a retinue like an entourage and they come in just like shining like the sun blinged out and they just annihilate you so sometimes you don't even get like a real practice running on the boss before she takes you out but much beyond that, I do like Crown Takers. I think the presentation is good. I think the mechanics are solid. I think that it's infinitely expandable, as in they could just DLC the hell out of that game and just make it way, way better, just like a collectible card game. And so I hope that they do. I hope they do consider expanding the game. I think that the developer, I noticed on the forums that people had been suggesting the developer watch my videos. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I'm a little uncomfortable with that just basically because I'm sort of biased like there are certain things that bug me in video games and some people will say that those are good mechanics. I'm one of those people that'll just be like Meh, I hate this mechanic and I'll just like bitch and moan about it and so if that's part of his gameplay design or his design theory he can go for it. That's his decision. This is his creative this is his creative I'm it's his creation there. I got stuck in the sentence in the middle trying to make something more complicated than it had to be and it's just the game is his creation. He can do with it as he likes. I think that some of my critiques are a little unfair because I focus on something, but definitely the adjacent spawning has to go. That one I stand firmly by. I think some of my complaints are due to the fact that I didn't understand the gameplay mechanics just yet. I think that the bosses can be a little unfair the first couple times you fight them because... In the case of Barka, she has a retinue, and so between her attacking like four times on the first turn and her retinue hitting you, you're probably going to lose about half your party after your first turn if you don't really know what she does, especially with the teleportation. If you try to lock her down, it's going to be very, very nasty. The Black Knight or the Dark Knight? The Dark Knight. The Dark Knight, I actually... The Dark Knight, you can cheese down, and once I realized you can be super cheesy with the Dark Knight, he's not that bad. So, bear, take from that what you will. He's very, very cheesable. I think that that about takes us where I want to go with Crown Takers. I like the game. The thing is, I like the game. There are a couple of rough edges, but by and large, I think it's going in a good direction, and I hope they continue to give it, like, DLCs and love, and I hope they don't just, like, move on to the next thing because I think they're chasing down something very good right now. It's just they need to sand off the rough edges, and then they need to add more content. They need to make things... I'd love it when you went into the houses if it was a little bit more interactable. I don't really know how to do that but maybe make it more exploration based or something like that. I, I'm not really sure. Like I, the whole thing about going into the house and like flipping a tile, which is basically what you're doing. That's an old board game mechanic from adventure games where essentially you'll go to the cottage and you'll flip the cottage's tile and you'll draw a card and you'll read what happens. And there's nothing you can do about the thing that happens. That's an old board game mechanic. And I'd like to see that made 
a little bit more video gamey. So I, I would liken it to like with Space Hulk. Space Hulk was a board game. Space Hulk Ascension is more video gamey. They did their best with it, and with that will trans we'll we'll definitely transfer our conversation over to Space Hulk. Space Hulk is a game that Space Hulk Ascension is a lot of fun, but once again, I think that they didn't make enough changes to the fundamental experience. They're they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. I was thinking about this the other day. Full Control is stuck in a very, very real place where the Warhammer 40k community is incredibly vocal and I think that they, you know, they like what they like and they want things to be as true to the original product as possible. And so in a certain respect, Full Control is very much up against a wall in that if they change too much, the Warhammer 40k fans will lose their minds and be like, this isn't Space Hulk, why did you slap it with the Space Hulk name, which I'm sure is some part of their licensing, like they probably had to include that somehow as a stipulation by Games Workshop would be my guess, as kind of one of those extra caveats of being able to buy a license to make the game. I think that... On the other hand, if they don't change enough, the problem that they ran into with the first Space Hulk is that people who play video games didn't get it. Like, people that didn't know what Space Hulk was, they had no idea what to say about Space Hulk because they were like, this seems kind of just rudimentary. And indeed it is. Space Hulk is a very old board game at this point, and it is rudimentary. I still think it's a fun game to play in its board game conversions and its video game conversions, but... It's old-fashioned, and you have to be ready for the old-fashioned nature of it. It's kind of like going back and playing AD&D. It's easier if you know what to expect, and if you played AD&D back when it was, like, the thing to play. Going back now with somebody that's only played 4th edition back to AD&D, they're going to be like, this seems really more complicated than it needs to be. And to a certain extent, they may be right. I tend to think 3.5 was the greatest, that like, D&D. I played AD&D, I played, like, 2.0, 2.5, 3.0, 3.5. 3.5 was the best version of D&D they ever made, hands down. I think that there's not much to argue with right there, but that's my point, is that people get stuck on certain iterations like, I'm stuck on Civilization 4. I don't like Civilization 5. I definitely don't like Beyond Earth, because I like Civ 4, and so I just kind of never moved on from there. And I, I liked the changes to the stack units. I like how you fight on hexes, but I didn't like a lot of the other changes. And so the problem remains with Space Hulk... That with Space Hulk Ascension, I think they changed the things, they changed the things that they could without like risking a full-on rebellion by the Warhammer 40k fans about it not being Space Hulk. And so I think that I sympathize with the developers because I can see their predicament. But I do like Space Hulk Ascension. I love the fact that you can customize all of your units now. I hope that they add a ton more beards, a ton more faces, a ton more armor, a ton more sigils, a ton more like random little things that you can put all over your armor. Maybe link them to achievements so that you can get achievements. And then after you get that Chivo, you can start throwing like newer, cooler stuff on your Space Marines to make them look more unique and original. I like that you get to choose your weapon loadouts. I don't know if we're going to get to use a weapon loadout that's a very very weird situation that I find myself in right now is the fact that I'm like 67 percent I almost recorded the entire series before the game came out I'm 64 or 67 percent of the way through the Space Wolf campaign right now and I'm only level three like my highest level is level three and the good weapons that you actually get to use like the things that are way at the end of the tech tree for example I think they have well, like the combi bolters, the combi bolters, you got to be really high level for those. Or, for example, to use a storm shield and a thunder hammer, like you have to be really, really high level to use that. And so I'm kind of wondering if there's going to be a new game plus or how that whole thing's going to work. But I think by and large, Space Hulk Ascension is going to be more accessible to people that wanted to play a more XCOM like experience. At the same time, the game is very, very much indelibly Space Hulk. There's. There's no way around it. It's still like a corridor crawling experience about blocking off choke points. And so I would agree they did the best they could with what they could. What's really fun is Eternal Crusade or whatever. Am I, anyways, the Warhammer 40k MMO, the shooter MMO, Eternal Crusade, that finally went into pre-orders. You can actually sign up and you can, you can back it now with like different packages and things like that. I may email the developers and be like, hey... My channel does a lot of Warhammer 40k stuff, like, I might be one of the biggest Warhammer 40k affiliated channels, like, in Let's Play. Like, I don't see a whole lot of other big channels that play Warhammer 40k as addictively as I do. Maybe throw me an alpha key, huh? And we'll see where that goes. We might be able to end up in a very, very awesome spot and getting to play the game a lot earlier than 
than normally we would have been able to. I don't know why I'm getting stuck on words tonight. I'm having trouble. I'm having a lot. I'm tired. It's been a long day. It's been a very, very long day. Much beyond that, there's not a whole lot of things to announce. I'm pretty happy with what we got done this week. I'm really happy with all the series that we have running. I think Alien Isolation is the one rogue contender right there where I'm hoping the game like wraps up fairly soon. I think that there's been a lot of logical conclusions in that game and points where they could have just been like, all right, you're done. You escape. You got to the Nostromo or you get to the Anisadora. You know what I mean? But unfortunately, I think they just keep... There's a lot of filler gameplay. I feel like there's a lot of filler gameplay. So hopefully it gets over fairly soon. That leaves us at our final point where really I've got one shout out this week. And so the shout out right now is actually really, really cool. This is like a fun shout out. And so Tyrone Richards wants me to shout out his brother. Now, unfortunately, he didn't tell me his brother's name. But apparently his brother just finished a degree in brewery operation like as a brewmaster in Munich and that's like super cool so congratulations Tyrone Richards you Ty I mean I congratulations to your brother your unnamed brother who I don't know his name but really congratulations that's a that's a cool that's a really really cool degree to have like a brewmaster in in Munich it's you're living the dream right there I have a lot of friends California actually a lot of people don't know this but California has a a very very real emergent microbrewery trend right now where there are breweries opening up all over California right now. Like, seriously, you can't throw a rock right now without finding, like, one of these weird new Belgium companies, basically, where a lot of people are going from California over to, like, Belgium. They're going places like Germany. They're going places where beers are brewed, and they're learning firsthand from some of these countries that have, like, a thousand years of brewery tradition. And then they're coming back to California, and they're doing all kinds of weird stuff with the formula and then, like, fiddling with it a little bit to make, like, a very – a kind of a new – California brewery subculture, I guess. And so there's a lot of that going on in California right now. And so I am very, very proud of your brother, Tyrone. That's that's a cool degree. I mean, people say a geology degree is cool, but a degree as a brewmaster, that's, that's pretty dope. So congratulations are indeed in order. That's going to be our shout out for the week. And so I think that leads us to a pretty good place to conclude this weekly review. If you've got questions for me down below, please leave them. I will go ahead and answer them during the Q&A session. I don't think that I had any this week, although frankly, I've been so busy. Let me jump on my terminal here and see if maybe I can fire a few of these out because honestly, I'm not sure. I may have had questions. Unfortunately, I just haven't had a whole lot of time to ski daddle through this time let's see here yeah it pretty much doesn't appear as though there's a whole lot of things that people asked there was a whole lot of people that offered like things that i should do with really soon with soon series as i suppose series that are coming up soon but oh there's a question right there so somebody asked us a youtube specific question so that's good they asked, when you monetize your videos, do you have any control over the advertisements that show up at the beginning, or is it just random? If you're with YouTube, it's random. And so, there's a couple different ways. You can be an affiliate channel. So basically, you can think of yourselves as an indie channel. If you're an indie channel, it means you have no production company that pays you. You get paid directly by YouTube. In doing this, you avoid paying fees to another company. The downside to this is that YouTube sells generic ads, so you can end up with like detergent ads and things running on the front of your videos which have nothing to do with video games. And so the bad thing there is that the payment you receive for the ads relates to how long people watch the ads, whether they click on the ads, whether this, that, or you know, that happens. I am with Curse, which is a union for gamers essentially. And they take a very small cut of my paycheck each month and they act as an advertising agency for me. And so I still don't have control over my ads, but Curse goes through every single month and they auction off the ad space at the front. And so, for example, on my channel, you see a lot more stuff for like Call of Duty and World of Warcraft and Wildstar and things like that that are video game related, thus increasing the chance that somebody will click on the video or click on the ad. And so that's that. And so let's see here. Is Crown Takers a good game for kids? Might be a little difficult. Might be a little difficult for kids. It depends on the age. I think if you're like 13 or 14, you'd be good. But if they're a little bit younger than that, I think they might get frustrated with it. I don't know. I was the little kid that like got, I don't know. I, little, I used to like, games used to make me frustrated when I was a kid. So I don't know. I just don't know. You can see my Movember beard right now is rocking. And so this is about 13 days of growth, I suppose. I've got like, I don't know. I just don't know. 
my face is itchy like all the time. I really do sincerely hate it. I've been having a collaboration with one of my friends on Facebook to talk about just like how much we hate our beards because we're both dudes that I try to keep myself like clean shaven most of the time unless I have like big sideburns or something. And my face is so itchy right now. Like I've tried everything. Like I shampoo my beard and I make sure that like I get it all nice and rinsed out so there's no soap left in it and it's still just itchy as hell. I don't know. I just don't know. Can you post your videos on the Facebook page? Unfortunately, I can't. I don't want, I could, I could, but I don't want to put my videos on Facebook because then it becomes like a dumping ground. And I noticed that people started caring a lot more about my Twitter and about my Facebook when I stopped doing that. And so when my Twitter, my Facebook used to be just like dumping grounds for my videos to update you on what I did that day, people cared a lot less and people didn't like comment on them. Now that I use Facebook to like joke around and talk with people and I use Twitter to do the same thing, I find that the interaction is better. And in fact, because YouTube's messaging system is so terrible, I like the fact that those two mediums allow me to talk with people a little bit easier. And so unfortunately, I try to keep, I try to keep kind of the social media aspect of this slightly separate from the videos I create because I don't like it when it becomes like a, like a dumping zone. What do you think of Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade? Well, I think we already hit that one right there. I will definitely be playing 40k Eternal Crusade. It will definitely be on the channel. I will definitely try to be one of those guys. Like, I don't want to go out there and say this right now, but I would love to kind of become what Northern Lion is to Binding of Isaac or Total Biscuit was to StarCraft. Was that where he started out? I think he started out with StarCraft. I'm not a big Total Biscuit connoisseur, but I'm pretty sure he started out commentating StarCraft. But anyways, I would love to be that guy that like keeps track of all the in-game politics and drama and everything like that because I care about Warhammer 40k. I have a vested interest in 40k succeeding, and while I will not allow that to keep me from making critiques of the game, I think that I'm almost guaranteed to enjoy the game simply by as long as the gameplay mechanics are as good as like planet sides I think I'll be okay and I'll probably enjoy the game quite a bit so there's that I think that's going to be about all I'm going to be able to cover for this week's Q&A there are a number of other questions around go ahead and if I didn't answer your question post it again post it again because I'm really in a state right now where I'm not being very organized and so the downside to this is unfortunately that because I'm in the middle of a move and all this other stuff that every day for me is just hectic right now so I'm reading questions now like as I'm going through and so I know if it seems that I've been absentee from the channel lately and I haven't been commenting and talking to people I really do sincerely apologize for that because it's just a transitional period in my life right now. Thank you for joining me in this weekend review. It's been exciting. This is the weekend review for November 15th, 2014. I look forward to seeing you all next week in our next review. Leave me your questions down below for the Q&A next week. Send me any shout outs you want me to do and I will do my best to do them. I'll see you all there. Bye, everybody.